Hey guys, Miles here at Tackle Hive. It is another Sunday, so it's another video about competition shooting. And today I have two guests with me. I got Dora and Dutch, and yes, they're both from the tactical world. But today's topic is going to be about sharing some of the you know, I'm a competitive shooter, sharing some of the competitive techniques and getting their take. Like what, you know, is there, you know, is there a marriage between sport and the tactical world? So stay tuned. You are doing it wrong. Hmm. Give it a shot. Drop fire, Mega. Huh? Another shot after that. I don't have to rack it back anymore. Nope. All right, if you're living in a striker fire world, rack of the slide after every dry fire rep is not the deal. All right. Pick up a dry fire mag, it fits in your gun just like a regular magazine and the patented mechanism resets your trigger after every trigger pull, making for faster, more efficient training. We use them and we recommend them. So check them out in the link below and use promo code TACHIVE for $10 off. All right, let's get to the video. Hey, welcome back. So again, we got Dor, Dutch, myself here. And in this Sports Sunday, we're going to be sharing some competitive techniques, which also spill in, or it's not, it's not forward in the tactical world or defensive shooting world too, but the approaches are sometimes a little different, and so I'm not going to talk about specifically what I'm going to cover right now. I'm going to actually have Dutch and Dor do something, and then I'll explain what it's all about. I'm going to keep times for everything. So first, all I'm going to ask uh, Dutch and Dor, we're at about five, six meters. They're just going to take two shots on one target and two shots on the next target, and I'm going to be timing them, all right? And we're just going to keep the total time, and then uh, we'll take things from there, all right? And it doesn't have to be from the holster. It can be from compressed ready. It can be from compressed ready, no worries at all. Well, all right, well. so so Dutch from compressed ready. Yep. Shooter, are you ready? I'm ready. Stand by. All right, so that was a two, three, one. Two, three, one, so we remember that time. And the split there after the second shot, okay, to the third shot is 0 0.63. 0 0.63, okay? So now Dora's going to do it. It's going to be two shots, two shots from compressed ready. Here we go. Shooter, are you ready? Yep. Stand by. All right, so that was a 289, and the split there was 0.98. So if you can remember that uh, door. So guys, we got the times for both Dutch and Dor, and what I want to work on here or talk about, which both Dutch and Dor know about, is cadence, cadence shooting, right? And we're not going to dive, there's a lot of details to cadence shooting, but there's one specific thing that I want to talk about. There's, you know, there's a lot of purposes when people might talk about, it might help teach beginners how to shoot in a rhythm or, or slowly, gradually speed up. But specifically what I want to talk about today and share it with both of you and see what your take is, is, is there anything that you could take into the defensive world or is it dangerous? Is that notice that there was a big gap when both Dutch and Dor shot the transition time between each target. And typically it's because the cadence in people's mind is usually one, two, one, two. But simply by changing the cadence to one, two, three, four, I don't know the science behind it, but all of a sudden the transition, because of the continuous series, a continuous rhythm, it becomes faster, total time becomes faster. Where instead of one, two, one, two, we're just going to do one, two, three, four. And you're gonna notice a difference there. You wanna continue the count. So that's all we're gonna do, one, two, three, four. And you don't necessarily have to speed it up. You can keep the, came, keep the same speed, but we, don't want the, the, we want the cadence to be just smooth. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's try that out. All right, so again, Dutch is gonna take two shots in each target, but instead of one, two, one, two, in our mind, we're saying one, two, three, four. And what was your time again, total time, Dutch? Last time? <laughs> two. Split was six, four. Okay. Two, 231. 231. Okay. Here we go. Shooter, are you ready? All right. Stand by. Get that cadence one, two, three, four in your mind. There we go. That was a 1.7. And that is obviously faster. And if we take a look at the, the split here, sometimes you'll notice the split is actually faster too. But sometimes when we shoot this way, the split will actually be longer 
but the total time will actually be, if it were have multiple target rays, but the total time will actually be shorter. So it's interesting. So the same thing now, Dora is gonna try it out and it's going to be instead of one, two, one, two, it's one, two, three, four. Okay, that's the cadence in your mind. Uh, what was your total time, last one? Uh, two, was, eight, uh, nine, something eight, like that. Yeah. The split was eight, nine. Okay, and then it was like two, eight, nine or two, nine. Okay, all right, here we go. So one, two, three, four. Shoot, are you ready? Ready. Stand by. Okay, so that was still faster. There was a little bit of a gap, so it was kind of like a one, two, one, two. Let's try it one more time, like even it out, like one, two, three, four. Let's try it one more time. But that was already faster. Okay, should I ready? Stand by. Okay, that was better. That was your fastest time, one, seven, six. There was still a little bit of a gap, and you can holster. But we can see both, both Dutch and Door, just by changing that little, tweaking that, their total time and typically the split times are gonna be faster. Now this is a very, this is a competitive technique, right? And it's usually, it's just a skill set for our transitions. But do you guys feel, from coming from the tactile world, is there anything that people should be concerned about kind of translating into the defensive world? And or are there any benefits that you see from this? Uh, Dutch, anything on here? Hey. Benefits, yes. So without a doubt, nothing to be concerned about. I think a new shooter may have something to be concerned about if he's not ready, he or she not ready to go that quickly or not understand how that works, that cadence in the mind. Because of course we do want that good cadence no matter what we're doing, but this will translate easily into the tactical world, right? This is, I'm facing multiple targets. I'm facing multiple foes, right? Whether it's the build drill or, sorry, not the build drill, but El Prez or something like that, or some sort of CQB environment that you're gonna have to address multiple threats, mm -hmm. then it's, of course it helps. Awesome, anything anything that you see that people should be concerned about or kind of as they approach this in terms of maybe that it's not tactically sound? No, I, mean, I think the only, to me, the only thing that, makes it, that would make it not tactically sound would be to get out of the gun quick, uh -huh. not to come back and redress your first target maybe. Again, from a tactical perspective, right? Well, I have one here, I have a second one here. I'm gonna come back over here and see what's going on here. Is he really done? He's done, my battlefield's over. Now I can come out of the gun. Awesome. Dor, anything like uh, the benefit or something concerned for the tackle space? What, what, do you, what do you think? No, I think it's definitely a benefit being able to take all of your targets, bring them together in one sequence versus just engaging everything individually. You mm -hmm. can make up time for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty cool, I think. And uh, there's definitely room for it in the tactical space. So that's one topic, guys, cadence. We're now going to discuss uh, another topic. I'm not gonna tell them what it is just yet. It's gonna deal with transitions, kind of like we're doing. And then uh, you know, I'll uh, get their take. All right, for this next exercise, we're gonna be working a transition. Dutch is going to start this little exercise on target already. So he'll have his trigger prepped. He's already pointing at one target and he's simply just going to do one shot and then transition to the next target and take a second shot. And we're gonna get the total time and the split, okay? All right, Dutch, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Stand by. All right, so that's a 0.65 and the split time there is a 0.2 or 0 0.45, 0 0.45, all right? 0.45, so Dora's gonna do it. He's gonna start on target, trigger prepped, one shot, one shot. Shooter, are you ready? Ready. Stand by. All right, and now it's a 0 0.87 with the split time of 0 0.63. So now, go ahead and holster. Both actually have heard the term and, and we're actually, actually kind of doing it, but there's, there, there's a way to actually increase the transition speed and the total time, total time the speed here. Riding the recoil, you guys have probably heard that before. And in the sport world, they call it a bump transition. There's a flat line transition and a bump transition. Can I borrow one of your pistols, even if it's hot? Okay, so we're safe here, guys. But notice, we have two targets here. Most people, most shooters, they do what's called a flat line. So they'll engage, and taking a side view here, this is what we wanna see right here. They'll engage the first target, the muzzle will come down, a flat line it to the next target, muzzle up, muzzle down. Whereas what we're gonna be doing here is riding the recoil, but in the competitive world, it is a bump transition. They call it a bump because once they take that first shot, the muzzle goes up, and now they're, instead of a flat line, they're gonna create a bump and then it comes right back down on the second target. Okay, so that's the difference, bump and a flat line. So now they're both, both were doing it well, but now I'm going to give them a little bit more information. So the little bit of information that you need to improve riding the recoil is literally, there's a saying, and I got this from JJ Ricasa, pull the trigger, pull the gun. Like literally once you pull that trigger, you're already moving. The reason being is that bullet's gonna travel so fast, you can't, we can't curve bullets. So once you call a good shot, pull the trigger, move it, your eye should go to the second target and it should be faster because we're not gonna wait for that flat line, right? So let's try it out and we'll see what happens here. 
So Dutch is gonna start on target. He's gonna pull the trigger, pull the gun, all right? Shooter, are you ready? Stand by. Perfect, that was a 0.49 and the split was a 0.31. And you can see just by pulling the trigger, pull the gun, because the bullet's gonna travel so fast. All right, Dora, let's try it out. Okay, so Dora's gonna start on target. When the buzzer sounds, he's gonna transition. Shooter, are you ready? Stand okay. by. So earlier, I believe Dora's time was about a 0.8. That's a 0.61. The transition was faster too at a 0.44. So let's do it again. So immediately, once you pull the trigger, particularly for those of you who are not used to this, those watching, it is, it does take some time. And usually it's great to have a partner literally look at your muzzle. They'll be on the side. And as you transition, if that muzzle goes down on the first target, they know you did a flat line. So what we're looking for is that muzzle comes down on the second target. All right, let's try it again. Pull the trigger, pull the gun. Stand by. Better, 0.54, 0.36. Go ahead and holster. So that's a, another competition technique. And I wanna run it by, because I'm a competitive shooter. I don't know anything about real gun fights. These guys do, okay? So let's, you know, is there, is it tactically sound? Anything to worry about, Dutch? So, okay, tactically sound, yes, C completely. So again, if I can marry these two things up together, right? Like we're trying to do a little bit, right? If we can marry the skills you learn for the range or for competition, can I go right into tactical situation? You, damn right it can, because again, just like we mentioned before, if I need to get this guy taken care of right away, right, wh why not use that technique, right? If it gets me over to the next target faster, why not? Come on, 100%. Uh, yeah, it target. took a little bit of getting used to because I realized what we were doing is we were altering follow through. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of like lining yourself up for additional shots and making sure that target goes down, we are gonna bank on our ability to land that shot and then instantaneously we're going to the next one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it is much faster and in those uh, multi-target engagement, like really heat of the moment yeah. situations, I mean, that can make the difference. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what both uh, have alluded to. I've had this conversation with other people, other, uh, other veterans, and usually the argument against it is it, you lack follow through, but kind of what you guys alluded to, if you had multiple points, like some lead is better than no lead in let's say multiple people approaching you, would you guys agree? 100%. Yeah, 100%, that's kind of like, I was having a struggle in my yeah. mind, like, you know, I need to like be ready, prepped for that last shot, because that's yeah. what you're doing as the guy's going down, hopefully, and then you're snapping to the next one. But it's just, it's too fast. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a throwback to the old days, because in the old days, pistoliers, you know, gunfighters shot really big bullets. Mm -hmm. And all, you only had to land one of those suckers <laughs> to uh, get the desired effect. But now we're living in a quantity over quality, nine millimeter world. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely, you know, when the fractions of a second, count altering your follow through to get onto that next target that much faster i mean it, yeah. the quick and the dead man you're either quick or you're dead yeah there's nothing wrong with shooting fast and accurately so i hope you guys like that video we changed it up a little bit you know here at tactical hive we're trying to merge the two worlds and anyone who does both knows there is a lot of you know a lot of the techniques complement each other and you know they're they're not really something that you have to necessarily pit against each other and for those of you who tune into this regular series on sundays it is a sport uh sport video but i wanted you guys to know like bring in dutch and door i want you guys to know that the stuff you're learning too can be applied in the defensive world but of course you have to consider certain things so you know we may do this again in the future other techniques but yeah just thought it might be interesting for you guys if you guys like the video as always like comment subscribe see you guys next week